Well, Western Kentucky's Student uh, University Government Association just passed a resolution calling on their school to provide free tuition for all African American students. Why is that? Well, they say it's to make reparations for slavery, a practice abolished more than 150 years ago. The resolution also, by the way, denounces standardized tests for, quote, upholding white supremacy and calls on the school to admit any currently incarcerated black person who wants to attend. They do not exclude violent criminals from that category. Andrea Ambaum is a student center at Western Kentucky University. She co-authored the resolution in question, and she joins us now. Andrea, thanks for coming on. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, of course. It's Andrea Ambaum, by the way. I beg your pardon. In either case, we're glad to have That's you. Fine. Um, it's easy. So I understand the reasoning. I think it's really clear. I, I don't think I agree, but I, there's no mystery about what this is about. Um, but some of the details are unclear. So, for example, would the category, the benefits from this, include black students whose families weren't in the United States during the slaveholding period? Recent arrivals, for example. Um, I actually can't hear you very clearly. Let me try turning up the volume. If you would. So let me just restate my question. Of course. The question is, would this apply to students whose families weren't here when slavery existed in the United States? So a lot of recent immigrants from Africa, the Caribbean, would they benefit from this? So when we talk about reparations, we're definitely specifically talking about um, people who have direct ties to slavery, Jim Crow, and segregation. I think that there are separate but just as important conversations to have about um, African immigrants, uh, Caribbean immigrants who come here and also face racial discrimination that inhibits them from um, education as well. Huh. So even people whose families didn't suffer under state-sponsored discrimination or under slavery would be entitled to that. Um, those groups tend to do, as I'm sure you know from looking at the numbers, pretty well. In a lot of cases, out-earn native-born Americans. Why would they be entitled to this also or to any special consideration? So I don't, you're using the word entitled, and I don't know if that's the right word. When we talk about um, African immigrants who come here and face racial discrimination, I can actually speak on this very uniquely because I am um, the daughter of immigrants who came here. There is unique discrimination that faces African immigrants that many people don't talk about. Well, I feel like as this proposal specifically focuses on um, black Americans who have uh, dealt with the effects of slavery and the inability to pass on wealth, which is really the big point that makes these groups disenfranchised and unable to get to college as readily as some groups are. Okay. Um, but what if those, well, you're really arguing two different things, but so let's, let's start, to stick to the primary one. How could you prove that your family was affected by Jim Crow or slavery? Would, would you have to show that your ancestors were a certain percentage of them were African American. I mean, how? What would be the standard for this? So these are important questions, and I'm actually glad you're asking them because the whole point of this resolution was to get a conversation started about reparations owed to Black Americans, specifically in the form of education. So there are small details, such as the ones you're pointing out, that would need to be more nuanced and more focused on, but. I, I don't think it's very difficult to prove that someone who hasn't immigrated here has suffered from the effects of slavery, Jim Crow, and segregation. I, I, I'm not sure they're small details, though, and they kind of get to the heart of what I think may be the problem with this, or one of the problems with